<clears throat> Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to another entry in this uh, Elvira's Movie Macabre Coffin Collection, as I've been uh, kind of going through all of these ones from the 2010 series. We're on to film number seven, which is for The Brain That Wouldn't Die from 1962, the synopsis for which is as follows. A doctor experimenting with transplant techniques keeps his girlfriend's head alive when she's decapitated in a car crash, then goes hunting for a new body. So, this one uh, has been hosted and riffed several different times, uh, such as with Mystery Science Theater 3000, and um, it's pretty absurd, you know, undoubtedly, and uh, has a very low ranking of 4.5 out of 10 on IMDb. But is the movie actually that terrible? Well, not in my opinion. Um, it is a pretty solid storyline, you know, and it's quite twisted as this doctor is working on transplanting body parts and such. And um, we even learned that his assistant, um, who has lost his hand um, in an accident, you know, the doctor was running experiments on him to then replace that hand with a new one and has been having issues finding a hand that won't just kind of wither away and die. Now we throw into this that his girlfriend, you know, is in this horrific accident and he just salvages the head, bringing it back to the lab. And it kind of gives us reason as to why he's trying to you know, acquire a new body, why he's going through these further experiments and why he thinks he has this breakthrough that may be able to help save her. Now, along with that, we have this crazy, like mysterious creature that's kind of kept locked away off camera. And the fact that this head of his girlfriend can not just communicate, but can communicate with this creature, we get this added bit of strangeness with it. And this monster, which is kept hidden until the end of the film, you know, looks like a mix between like Frankenstein's monsters we've seen in several films, especially ones even before this, such as classic Frankenstein and Sloth from the Goonies. Very strange looking thing. But one thing which really stood out to me in this one is how much it was reminding me in the most basic sense of the 1990 film Frankenhooker. Um, which is similar in that we have the task of building or acquiring a new body for our scientist's girlfriend. But honestly, I would say the only real downfall with this movie is the pacing. You know, there are too many scenes that go on a little bit too long. Um, we kind of drag from one portion to another. And I feel like we have a solid 60 minutes worth of story in this that's maybe dragged out a little bit too long to try to stretch it into a feature length film. They probably could have padded it with something else or just made it a much shorter film in general. But other than that, it's still actually worth the watch, you know, I actually enjoyed watching it just because it's so strange and absurd. So, what about the Elvira portion of this disc? Well, that one's pretty good as well. Not the best, but her skit in this one really has to do with her kind of practicing to be on a game show in hopes that she can win some money and relieve some financial issues, which carries on throughout. Not as often and as upfront as like the Werewolf of Washington skits that she did where she was running for office and was doing different impressions of like Sarah Palin and quoting different uh, different political figures, you know, throughout that time. But, um, you know, it still happens throughout. But um, the only issue was that up until the first commercial break, I don't think we got any pop-ups from her at all where she would kind of pop in and riff on the movie. So those didn't really come until a little bit later into it. But after that, you know, when she throws more of that in there, she's poking fun both of the film within the skits themselves and those pop-ins that we've seen in previous entries. And there's also a lot more portions where she's riffing on something and using footage from the movie, kind of going back and forth, you know, as like filler within those skits. And that definitely helps make, um, make up for how slow parts of this film are. Um, is that, uh, you know, but even with that slowness, I would say that this is a title that, you know, within this collection that I could see myself revisiting, you know, it's a little bit slow, but her skits definitely make up for, it. and it's a really weird and twisted story that, um, really with her presentation on top of it, it definitely makes it worth checking out. And speaking of checking out, thanks for checking out this other little short video here for film number seven in this set of 28. So there's 21 more to go. This is going to be rough because I think that there's going to be a lot more kind of B-movies like this and a lot less of the ones like The Night of the Living Dead that were really worth sitting down to check out. But I'm still going to do a video for each one, even if they end up kind of short like this one. So be sure to like, subscribe, comment, interact in those posts and hit that bell icon to get notifications for when I put up those uh, those new videos, which typically is going to be on every Friday. And of course, I'm going to still try to keep up with putting up at least one other one during the week, whether it's on a Monday or Wednesday, whether it's horror or an 80s throwback or some sort of a franchise review like I just did recently with going through the first four Omen films before diving into the remake a little bit later. Anyways, thanks for coming by and for sticking around to the end as it really does help out quite a bit. Be sure to check out my back catalog and I will see you in the next one.